But I know Jerry's coming in too. No, he's not. He's not. He changed his mind. His car broke down. Oh. Well, great, I was going to have him do some of the talking. <laughs> Look, you have to stay awake, Mac. Everybody, welcome to That Checks Out with Damon and Raspy. Yes. I'm Raspy. He's Damon. Damon, how was your week? Uh, my week was pretty good, actually. So what I want to do, I want to get into a couple things, all right? Um, I did, listen, from a mental standpoint, because we all know that this is the longest we've yeah, the shortest we've ever gone. So the music is like, "What are you guys doing?" It's weird. Yeah, it's, it's still my turn. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, because he didn't fade it out at all. You know what? Notice that he like left it full bore. Yeah, I, what happens? I when told him you literally to never to touch it. I <laughs> literally never touch it. Right. I, I hit one button and then I hit one button at the I end. Don't just reach around and start jiggling stuff like some people. <laughs> I'm jiggling it. It's not doing anything. It's not plugged in. That's why it doesn't work. Yeah. By the way, now I have sound on my headphones because Mac is phenomenal at his yeah. job and was able to you plug them in. Is that I work? inserted that jack. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole's gonna post on this. By the way, <laughs> I was jiggling around, but yeah. I guess it wasn't inserted. Jiggling around, it wasn't there. I don't I guess it was never in. <laughs> it is what it is. Damn it, did you put them both to six? I swear to God, I tuned them both to six. I tuned them in both to six. <laughs> so, uh, no, so I, I did, last week I did a, uh, I did a, I did a fast, like I was saying. We, we made fun of me a little bit because I was in here. But I ended up making it the whole five days. And so mentally, it takes a toll on you, and I feel really, really good. Um, what's funny is, is my cousin, a buddy online, says, oh, yeah, it's, it's just like eating no sugar. It's the same thing. I go, it's not the same thing. Well, yeah, he, he worded it. Just eat no sugar. It's, it does the same thing, which I, I get what he means. He means that if you cut sugar out, you'll have the same results. That's not the same path. Yeah. that's. I mean, it's hard to cut sugar out of everything, but yeah. it is a lot easier than yeah. not eating at all. Not eating at all. Right. But I, I did a, I did a, a, a five-day water fast where I had one night I did have two unsweetened Iced teas, no sugar, no nothing, you know. You're a phony. Yeah, you're a phony. This guy's a phony. What a bum. So, anyway. I'm going to have to call my manager. That's my best one. I can't do yeah. it. <laughs> so, are we going to get it? I'm a robot. I'm a cop. Because I don't think your voice is going to hold up for that tonight. You got 15 minutes of voice. We better, <laughs> we better pace it out. So, so what I what I laughed about was, because he did that, and I was like, I looked at the scale. Listen. I've eaten, like I've done keto before and this and that, and, and you feel good. And I've done that for months on end, um, but I can't stay doing that, you know? And and so in this instance, I just feel my head's mentally cleared. It's good. Oh, which is interesting to go, because you also got recommended, a lot of people recommended you do carnivore, which is, you know, uber keto. It's literally it is. just eating oh, meat. Essentially meat, yeah. Well, they, they call it now, they call it the, it's, it's, it's beep, it's, um, Bacon, beef, eggs, and butter. Yeah. So it's B B B E. That's what it is. Okay. I would have gone with Beb. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know why. Where's no, the two B's at the beginning or two B's at the end? Doesn't, doesn't matter, matter huh? Yeah. Doesn't matter, huh? But call me. You guys went with the stupid. You, <laughs> yeah. went, with, you went with B. <laughs> so so I, I would do that. Here's the deal. First off, that takes takes a lot of money. Okay. I was gonna say that's not cheap. It's expensive. But you want to know what's weird is when you start pricing. So say say a, a, a dinner time. Um, accessory accoutrement to your dinner, yeah. okay? Uh, you're going to have extra. I mean, there's an extra charge for a box of mac and cheese. Uh, uh you know, uh, whatever. I, there's yeah, always extra. I, I get that. Fees, also, you know, we got to get our boy Boucher to go into pigs. I mean, cows. He's cows. Not, I'm not. A, I'm not a pig. I know he's always got pigs. I'm like, like, I always got pigs. Like, dude, my, get a cow. I need beef, uh, and I'll go carnivore. Yeah, I need beef. Yeah, I need it's, beef. It's Boucher holding us down. What are we farmers? That's. You know what? I blame Matt for yeah. me being fat. Is that, hey, can I go on a shirt? That, put it on. Why did you, did you scumbag? What did you just do into the microphone? Did you, you hear him? You were really going hard on the scumbag. Thing. I was. I listened to it back. I was quite proud told of it, you. actually. <laughs> yeah, I told, I told you my feelings were hurt. <laughs> I mean, that, that, wow, I don't even think it was conscious. I think it was no, an automatic No, I, th I think it just, came, it just came into play. The first one, I didn't realize, because I even kind of whispered, I'm like, scumbag. I said it. And I, I was like, did I, what did I just say? But then I'm like, oh, Max, Max got his feelings hurt. I know what well, I just I, said. Again, I think it was his feelings that reacted. I don't think his conscious mind did. I, don't I think know. his feelings were like, yeah. wow. Yeah. These guys really don't like that. Me. That yeah. hurt. Whoa, I don't, I don't understand why Allison and I was calling Because <laughs> you were angry. You're like, go ahead, Damon. Call him that. I heard. I, 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 I played it back. I heard. Angry Ted was out yeah. of the building. Last but time. anyway, I just, I, I wanted to say that it, just so everybody knows, it is not the same. Okay. <laughs> it is not the same because something and nothing yeah. are two different things. Yeah. On one, I can eat if, something. Yeah. I was going to say, if you could have eaten like a salad, 
You're right. You would have been fine. Now, does that count? Like, if you're trying to cut out sugar? Because, you know, tomatoes have sugar and well, carrots have sugar. Is pro- it just added sugar? Is it natural No, sugar? no, okay. really. When when they have you do that, they really don't want you to have, like, even keto. They don't want you to have Yeah, fruits. no keto, but I'm saying, like, they if you're cutting sugar out. If you're cutting sugar, it's even natural sugar. So, like, watermelon, which is delicious, but it's, like, all sugar and water. I mean, it's really what it, you know what I mean? Strawberries, a lot of sugar, you know? It's natural, yeah, it's but it's fruits, sugar. But I'm like, you know. Yeah. But, no, I, it's it's it seriously cuts that all that stuff out. So, realistically... I was proud of myself. The scale was crazy, but here's the deal. I didn't do it for that reason. You know what I mean? It was like, and plus, it's like throwing a deck chair off the Titanic. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, hey, Damon, you lost all this weight. Cool. You know, as soon as you eat something, like I didn't weigh myself since. I've had a couple meals. I haven't. I mean, I probably gained half of it back because your body just adapts. But it's more or less about the the clarity of the head and everything. It was, it was very nice. Um, but I wanted to point out, Marty, it is not the same because something and nothing do not equal. Yeah. There's not an equal sign between them. Um, so one other thing I was coming into work one day and there's a, when you co- start to come into the joylet and you go past the airport there. Yeah. I'm familiar. Okay. There is a, <clears throat> a big, uh, like electronic billboard changes stuff all the time. Yeah. Okay. And it says, it says life lessons. And I thought, well, enlighten me. What are we doing as I'm driving into I town? I don't know if the sign by the joy, the joylet airport in the, the hotel they were supposed to tear down it's for qualified. six months. Yeah, but <laughs> it's qualified to give life lessons? The old hojos. So then it says, swimming lessons, a lesson that lasts a lifetime. My initial thought was, yeah, especially if you suck at it, because yeah. you are dead in seven minutes, yeah. okay? Hey, how'd he die? Well, he's taking swimming lessons. What number was he on? Uh, coincidentally, one. one. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Uno, it, uno. It was a life lesson. He had he carried that lesson to the end of his life. <laughs> till the end, till his last breath. Which happened to be yeah. in the pool at the Y, where he was learning how to swim. So, but but again, <laughs> that would be me too. They'd be like, "Just stand up," you yeah. know. <laughs> How'd he drown? Okay, first off, he was in the four foot end. Yeah, he is six foot tall. Okay, this should have never happened. Okay, you know that little place where we just have you wash their feet. Yeah, at the ledge. Yeah, <laughs> I fall, he, I trip and fall, and I'm, I'm laying right, in it. He was right. There. Isn't that pool zero entry? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He died at zero. <laughs> he was at zero. He, did he hit his head? Not, not yeah. at all. Not at all. He was face down. Didn't think to roll over. <laughs> so, because you know what, he's taller. His head's taller than zero. His body was so addicted to water by that point <laughs> yeah. that his face was going. That's right what it in. was. He said, "I need to get these gallons in me." <laughs> You know how much easier it'd be if I just drank this pool? Yeah. <laughs> Give me a straw. I need one of them life straws, yeah. right? That's what you need. So I tell you what, I'd rather drink out of a pond than go to the wide pool and be like, oh, yeah, I think I'm going to start pool? sucking the water out of here. Hey, you know what? Your water tastes like piss. <laughs> <laughs> it's 87% piss, sir. <laughs> then later on, you're like, your piss tastes like water. <laughs> okay. I'm just letting you know. But but no, I just, I really thought I'm like, that's a, a lifetime, a life lesson. Okay. So you're learning life I lessons. I like how you, you break... T- US 52 just to be like, oh, I backed up this whole lane just to say this. Just uh, to see, yeah. This rotating yeah. billboard. Because now like, you were showing me who's going to play at, uh, uh, what is it, uh, whatever their their summer fest is. Oh, yeah. You are showing me who's going to play at Inwood, and I'm going, hold on, I want that life When's lesson. When's that life lesson spinning yeah, around? When is that coming back? You know? <laughs> I'm I in that's park. How, that's how those billboards always get me. I'm always on, uh, on the interstate, and I see it, and I'm like, oh, I want to see what that says. Yeah. But as soon as I get there. It, it's something you know it turns to like learner and grow or yeah like i know that it's just a bunch of twos what you're like two, I two, wanted, two? yeah what's the one i wanted to see yeah <laughs> yeah i've not been I in mean, a car accident i don't need to talk to flash learner and row for eight seconds and everybody, everybody knows like, who it yeah, is boom twos yeah go. it's kind of like the old uh eagle man it's like yeah. i see him up there i know what it is okay yeah i've seen the low rates yeah <laughs> but uh but again i just i i had to bring that up because i feel like any swimming lesson is a life lesson if you suck at it okay you will take that to your grave, one way or another. But no, I, I could honestly see them be like, "All you have to do is stand up." Yeah, and then and then you know what happened is I my family would win a lawsuit. Be like, "Who was watching them?" Okay, <laughs> they they threw the pool. It, it They'd was, be like, "You're right, we weren't watching." It was them. a 48 year old man and 15 four year olds. Yeah, we were watching the four year olds. Yeah, we were going with what we thought were the odds. <laughs> So everyone in the pool that's not four foot tall, yeah. that's where focus was. Yeah. Okay. That's where focus was. We thought anyone that could just not drown by being on their knees, yeah. their waist, right. holding their thumbs up by their hands. Yeah. You, you know, you do that hand walk in the shallow yeah, part. That's what, yeah. If you'd have just hand walked out, sir, you would have made it. Just hand walk. Just hand walk. You know, the other thing though, too, is we're like, 
where we really feel bad is like for the first eight minutes he was actually dead. The kids were swimming to the raft. We're like, wait a minute, yeah. there's no raft yeah. in the pool. So what are, what are we doing here? That's a really hairy Italian looking yeah. raft. <laughs> That's gross. Where did we get that? They're bringing Chris Hansen shows up at the pool. They're bringing me up on yeah. charges for touching all these kids. Yeah. They they swam out to him. They were on him. So whatever you get for drowning he's in this pool, waiting. he's just waiting. <laughs> he's got his water wings yeah. on and his laptop. Still wearing a suit though. Yeah. Still wearing a suit. So, Suddenly he's like, uh, actually, uh, regular Dateline. I think you need to take care of this. Yeah. This has gone to you now. <laughs> hey, forty eight hours. Yeah. Let's figure out how this guy yeah. drowned. First off, we all saw it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You got it on film, man. Yeah. You guys got closed circuit camera in here. We know where it is. <laughs> so um, I would ask you, but uh, anything interesting for you? Yeah, thanks. Like I didn't tell you about it. Like, you don't know. I, I, did. I know we talked about it. Our recording is weirdly condensed. Like this is not the same day. Right. Not even the same week, but I talked mm -hmm. about going to comedy last week and I've done it since then. Was it good? Uh, it was funny. Now, Mac will enjoy this. I got there and... Uh, Frank, the proprietor, couldn't figure out his new soundboard. He got a new soundboard, but didn't know how to work it. And he just needed to play music through the speakers. And he had a thumb drive. And I wasn't messing with any of the, you know, the sliders, the buttons, the knobs, any of that. It was just, how does this thumb drive work? And I just go, boom, music. He's like, show me how you, how you did that. I'm like, oh, I can't because it's not in the state it was. Like, it is playing now. Yeah, now it's fixed. I don't know how you broke it. Yeah. Uh, I said later. I said later. I I'll said, plug, I said you'll be here in. tomorrow. Yeah. I'll show you tomorrow. He's like, well, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. Uh my coworker Jim is going to be here. My employee Jim, actually. And I, I got like, you. I was like, okay, cool. I said, how about this? And tonight, once the show's over, we turn it off, turn it back on, and then we see if we can break it, and then we'll fix it. Right. He's like, okay, that's great. Cut to the end of the show. It was with Mike Toomey from the WGN Morning Show. That's yeah. A show here. Toomey's in funny. Yeah. Toomey's funny. So he had a lot of people up there to see him. So they like we're taking they're taking photos and everything. I'm just hanging out, of course. How, how many people asked for your photo? Um, a couple of people asked me to take their photo with Toomey. <laughs> so that was nice. Believe it or not, I had a lot of photo requests. But I did. I, I, was I, will, I will say this. To, to be fair, I had a lot of people come up and say, hey, that was great. We had no idea what to expect. We came here for Mike. We didn't know who you were. Yeah. Uh, but that was fabulous. We loved it. A couple of ladies, we, I talked with them for a good 10 minutes. Really? Going over the one, this is, and look, this is why I do it. I don't do it for the, you know, if I did it. because For I was the chasing, tens of dollars? Yeah, for the tens of dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could open let's, a studio, but go yeah, ahead. Let's keep it at that because the IRS thinks I make tens of dollars. Tens know. of dollars. <laughs> um, anyway, she was like, look, I didn't know if I was ready to laugh. I just know what I'd already bought the tickets. I just, I've had a bad week. Uh, you were up there within a couple minutes. Uh, I had tears in my eyes from the laughter. So thank you. It's really what I needed. And I was like, that's probably the first time anyone's come up and said that said, you know, right. Uh, what you did helped me out. Some people yeah. were like, you did a great show. I loved it. It was funny. This is the first time they're both of them were like, yeah, we both were, uh, we just wanted out, have a good time. We didn't know what we were getting into. We just love comedy. And some of them were like, there's a couple other comedy clubs up here. You should go to them. We'd love to see you up there. And I'm like, hey, that's great. It'd be more important if the person who ran that club was the one yeah. asking. Are me. they here by chance? But, do you yeah. know them? Were they a ride? Right. But that <laughs> right. was really nice. And they were and they were quoting some of my jokes back to me, which- Oh, that makes yeah, you feel good. It was really cool. It makes you feel good. Because they heard you one time. Yeah. <clears throat> so that yeah. makes you feel good. And it was, the, it was some of the jokes I was like, oh yeah, that's the one. I like that one. <laughs> Uh, that I one's like, a I keeper. Said that. That's the one, right? That one's a keeper. And so then finally I go up to Frank and I'm like, hey man, can we uh, show this? I have a 90 minute drive home. And he's like, because Toomey was staying the night. He's like, are you staying the night? I was like, no, I was given permission by my boss to do that. But then you're just giving the money you've made back to the hotel. Because I wasn't sure if like, I know the headliner gets a free night. I don't know what the feature gets a free night. Right. They probably could. It's not like they're packing that place. It's Kenosha. Right. Anyway, he's like, well, I just have to go to bed. I feel sorry. I just have to go up, like one flight and go to bed. I'm like, yeah, I get it, Mike. Thanks. I understand that I'm the one getting boned here. But I go to Frank and he's like, oh, well, uh, just show my employee tomorrow. I'm like, then why did I wait around? Then why am I here? It's 25 minutes I waited. Yeah. I mean, I got to talk to the nice ladies and the other people that came up. But yeah, but, but, sake, but a third of your ride was already I, home. Yeah. I got up at five to go to work to drive from the joylet to Wisconsin. Yeah. Straight there. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Get up there the next the next day. This is the part Mac will like. Uh, Jim's like, yeah. Uh, Frank told me that you could do the music and do the mic, and I was like, um, why don't we didn't I didn't cover anything but other, how to turn on the uh, <laughs> thumb thumb drive. Yeah, all of the sliders and buttons and knobs had been set back to where they were pr Ooh. previously, and I so was like, so sound check is yeah. gone. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, I said, did you check the mic? He said we checked it earlier. I'm like, well, what does it what does that mean? Well, I just actually I just took him at his word. I'm like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> we get up there. I look at the, that's when I look at the board and notice the only thing that is playing is the music that I had started earlier. No other slider or anything has moved. And I'm like, oh no, this could be a good night. Yeah. yeah. Now I'll give people a little bit of a hint. My voice already sounded like this. 
Nice. So I was like, I have to have that mic. Otherwise, it's the front row is going to have a great time, and the rest of the people are going to be like, boo, and not, yeah. for the re- and not for the reason they can hear my jokes, because they can <clears throat> right. hear my jokes. Right. Well, they would have booed twice. And then, <laughs> and then twice. Toomey's sitting right there, well, can't you get it when you're going to need that mic? Because across the hall is a band playing, because Frank likes to have cons- oh, concurrent dueling. shows. Yeah, dueling shows. On Saturday. So there's yeah. a band just jamming So it. you have to have noise. And they've got their door open, because it's a little hot in there. Yeah. We can't have our door open, because we're talking. That's It won't carry. And right. we got to out blast them. And he's like, well, what do you, you gotta, you, dude, you gotta fix this. I'm like, I'm working on, I'm like, you work at a television station. Have you not paid attention to anything? <laughs> yeah. Hey guys. Hey. Has no one showed you how the board works? They have microphones there, right? You ever use one? Yeah. <laughs> and cut to me. I, I mean, this would drive um, Matt crazy. I mean, no, it would. Cut to me pushing everything. Oh yeah? Yeah. While Jim's <clears throat> up there doing the thing. So it's I, Damon method. I pulled the music down. I knew how to do that. I knew how to cut that. Yeah. <laughs> While Jim's up there, the music went up three times. Because I was like, oh, that wasn't it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, about five, bad. about five minutes in, you're, oh, word. Hey, everybody. Like, you got real loud. I'm like, hey, I go to do my, got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Nailed it. We're good. Way to stick the landing. We're good. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I was like, okay, when he talks, one of these will light up, right? Because it's plugged in. Nope. Because that, that button was off, too. Oh. Finally, I found that button, and then I saw the, the, like, the, the bars lights moving? go up, and yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, there it is. Found yeah. it. Yeah. Like, why would you turn that button off? Yeah, there's my boo. Just pull that volume down. <clears throat> yeah, I think, there's my boo. I think someone went in and literally was like, you know, just pull them all guy, back. There's a guy coming in. He'll figure it out. Yeah. The cleaner guy. He's like, what do you do? First off, I push all the oh, buttons Oh, so then <laughs> uh, Jim's like, did Frank pay you last night? I was like, no. He's like, oh, great. Now I got to find your checks. I'm like, yeah, that'd be great. Hmm. Then he comes up, good news, bad news. I found your checks. He you didn't sign them. Frank's not there. I'm like, well, there better be a way around this. You might want to sign Frank's name. Apparently there's a stamp somewhere. So they got that. Yeah. Take care. But then. Um, I asked him, hey, because it was a sold out. It was sold out. So it was, usually there's a, a table in the back where the comics can sit. I can hide my bag underneath the yeah. tablecloth. We're good. We're sold out. We, the green room is the lobby. Gotcha. Last time that happened, they opened up another room, but this time Jim didn't have those keys or didn't know what it was. The green room's the lobby. So I go to him. This is a Saturday said, night show. This is the big yeah. show. And there's yeah. a show across the hall. So I'm like, where can I put my bag? So it doesn't, he's like, well, I'm going to, put it in the office as long as you stand here. So I go, okay. So I'm standing there, people coming in, they're giving me, I'm like, oh, where, do you know your seats are? They're like, no. And I'm like, oh, good. That makes two of us. <laughs> so I look at their thing and I go see them and do some stuff. I'm like, hey, um, I know I'm not really great at this, but I guarantee you'll see me later. And then I go up there, do my thing. And then I go to Jim. I say, hey, do you want me to do the ending? Because he's, he's running both shows. Right. So he's like, yeah. So Toomey gets done. I run up, say, hey, have a good night. Thank you much. Let's, you know, tip your waitress. Another round of applause for Toomey. Yeah. Then I got to run to the back and turn the mic down and turn the music back up. And I I'm like, wrote mm. to Frank. I was like, hey, um, I'm going to want union dues. Yeah. For everything I did that was not comedy related. Yeah. So, Brian, I'm going to need to know what the rate is for stage hand jobs. Yeah. What is it yeah, for hand jobs? What do you got there, What's Mac? The... $75 an hour? Uh, 27 28 to start. Wow. Wow. Look at that. That's way less than I was making. I'm going to charge him comedy rates. Thing. Never <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I'm going to yeah. charge him comedy You know rates. what? I was, I'm was. i going to be funny the whole time I'm doing it. Yeah. So that's why you're going to have we're, to pay me we're funny We're going time. back to the comedy per hour. Yeah. <laughs> Good news, bad news. <laughs> okay. I'm still going to do this, but you're going to pay my rate when I go, uh, ha ha. But yeah, it, this wasn't nerve wracking enough to have two of me leaning over. like, hey, uh, we're going to need that, man. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to need that mic. <laughs> yeah, no, I got it. Yeah. Figure that out. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be like you're trying to defuse a bomb. Hey, we're going to need that to stop counting. Yeah, I got it. No, I'm. Yeah. <laughs> I know where we're going. I know where the goal is. Yeah. I, don't I think zero's to. bad. If that gets to zero, are we in trouble? Yeah. A but bit. no, both nights were, were fantastic. It was one of the best times I've had. Um, good solid 30 minutes. You got 30? Yeah. Cool. I figured you got 20 or 25, but yeah. 30, huh? Yeah. I came yeah. out and Jim's like, wow, you do, you do a pretty long set. I'm like, yeah, well, it used to be three guys. Now there's two. I don't know how many regulars come out here, but if I was paying more, because it's more money than it was when we first started going up there. Yeah. If I was paying more money for less comics <clears> and less time. Yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably want a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. A little bit more bang for the buck. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and plus, I mean, you probably have a guarantee of like an hour and a half show. And if, if it's just you and him and Toomey only does an hour, you know what I mean? Yeah, you you yeah. got to fill. You know what yeah, I mean? You don't, you don't, Jim you, does like five minutes up top. Five, yeah. Between five and 10 doing like announcements and what's coming up, right. giving out some free drink tickets. You know, just how you But get, those aren't ha-has. No, I know. Yeah. But. Those aren't ha-has. I mean. Yeah. I'm saying like, I got to come in up after that. Right. And like, so. Because sometimes that works, and sometimes people are like, just get to the show. Yeah, right. And yeah. you're like, um, you know what? If they were just sat down and were ready for comedy, that's one thing. Now I got to dig them out of this. Like, I didn't win anything. Why is that guy got to win? Right, oh, yeah. You, everybody's got prizes but me. Make me laugh, uh, funny man. Yeah. I, I will tell you this. The, <laughs> the first night they were like, oh, what's your name? You know, like, you know, Lisa won, and 
Joan one and Mark one. These are all real names. Sarah one. Yeah. And then one of the guys is like, what's your name? He goes, Muskrat. So I get up there and I'm like, Hey, let's, let's, uh, it's great to meet everyone. Let's uh, go around the room. We've already met Sarah and Mark and Joan and Muskrat. Is that a, is that a, is that your Christian name? Is that, is Rat your last name and Musk your first name? What are we talking? Ooh, Elon Muskrat. Yeah, I started going. And <laughs> you can tell that he, he, he regretted trying to be a smart ass. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Don't pl- you can play games with the, yeah. with the room runner that doesn't know what he's doing. Don't yeah. play games. You're with not him. the funny guy yeah. here. Yeah. Neither then, am I, and then but he's Zumi coming went up. up. Yeah. Zumi went up and burned that room. Oh, he did burned he? it to the ground. He's like, what do you do? And they just started asking me what their jobs were and just going on and on. And he's, and I asked one guy and he's like, oh, I worked for American Motors. So you're saying you've been out of job for 50 years. Right. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> They've yeah. been gone for a long time. Yeah. Many decades. <clears throat> Many decades. So, uh, so the, the, the follow-up from last week was it may or may not be funny. It was funny. It's funny. It's it was funny. funny. Yeah, there's a follow-up. See, yeah. that's why you should always listen to back-to-back episodes so you don't get left hanging. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. If you listened to last week, you wouldn't it's, know. It was new, so it's new to you. Yeah, it's new to you. So can I have a, can I give a PSA? Please do. I'm going to give a PSA. Here, it's it's an election year, right? Okay. Yeah. So here's what I want to tell everybody, okay? I do not endorse, nor will I ever say that I endorse anyone specifically, okay? But if you give me a free pen and I use it, it's because I endorse free pens, okay? okay. I do not have a, a uh, uh, loyalty to any particular person other than the one who handed me said pen, okay? And my loyalty goes to that pen runs out, okay? And that's what it is. Did, did someone give you a pen? <clears throat> people gave me pens. And they're like, oh, yeah. And then they want to talk politics. It's like no, like other people at work, whatever. Hey, you want to talk? I don't want to talk politics. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw this pen in the garbage, and I'm going to get another one. Yeah. Okay? I do it right in front of me. Yeah. yeah here we go. Like, Shook. We are now done. Yeah. Okay? We are done. All right? That's how it goes. But that's my PSA. Please know that whenever there's an election year, if I have tchotchkes of any kind that yeah. have something on it, just know, if yeah. I have a magnet that has an elephant on it, okay, that's not a self-portrait, and that's not that's not who I vote for. What I'm saying is, that holds a piece of paper on my refrigerator because that was free, yeah. okay? That's what happens, okay? If I get three with a donkey on it, that's what holds it on the fridge. I don't care, right? okay? But all these people that they jump to these conclusions, oh, what about, look, I don't know what platform he stands on. You know where he got my vote? Free pence. And you know when I don't vote for him? When I go to the booth, okay? Because I don't know who he is. because yeah, you know what? I got free pence. I'm not taking that pen into the booth. Correct. Yeah. I don't know. I get in there and they're like, I, I come out. It's like, man, some of the names look really familiar. Yeah. You're wearing the shirt, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, you're wiping is, your brow with a towel. It's just laundry day. I didn't It's even, laundry day. I didn't know. Yeah. yeah Chuck yeah. doesn't have my shirts done. Yeah. I got it. This pen was free. But it, that's a PSA. Just so everybody knows, just because someone's using something, bottle opener, koozie, whatever people give out, all right, it doesn't mean that that's who I support. It means I like free shit. That's all it is. Yeah. That's my platform. If I was running for something, it would be like, listen, I will represent you. What are you going to give me? Okay. That's what's going to happen. It's real simple. It's a American politics. It's a pretty, that's pretty, pretty, pretty solid platform, yeah. ain't it? So, and then, uh, <clears throat> so I have one more thing um, from the week that I forgot. So uh, last weekend we went for Mother's Day. Okay. So I'm leaving uh, Don's house, my stepdad's house, right? I'm leaving the house and I back out of the driveway. I put it in reverse. I back out. I put it in drive, and nothing happens. And I go, well, hold on a minute now, okay? Row, row. Yeah. And what's nice is, is my shifter just flops all over the place. And I go, oh, I don't know if that's nice. And I go, ooh, I think maybe I found a problem, though, okay? So I let it roll back down the hill, because, you know, I back out of my parents' driveway, and I'm I'm going up the hill. I let it roll down the hill and back into the driveway, and I'm like, let's figure this out. So I have to call my buddy from work, right? And I said, hey, sorry to bug you on Mother's Day, but here's the deal. This is what happened. And I said, I think I broke the shifter cable. He goes, I think you did too. I'm like, yes. How do I fix that so I get home? <laughs> right? That's what I'm like. So he tells me, and I, I kind of see where it's at. And I'm like, okay. He goes, you got to pull that lever on top of the trans and get it into drive. That's cool. But if it's in drive, I can't start it. So it has to be in park. Yeah. Has to be started or neutral. Then I have to get it in drive. Now, here's the great part. I had already driven for about two and a half hours. And I will tell you right now, it's this is geometric shapes. Some things don't fit where other things do. I can tell you where my arm fits right against the hot manifold a say, thousand times. Say it's too hot in the hot tub. Yeah. So I have, you know, if you see the pink mark still on my arm, oh, but yeah. I, oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I scorched myself. Like I, I'm like, someone cooking bacon. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, here? wait a minute. Yeah. Cause he doesn't have cows. I blame my fatness. Yeah. Okay. And him not having beef. Okay. If you're fat, it's because I'm mad. <laughs> You want to know what's weird? That might be a hot jingle. 
Yeah. That really might be a hot jingle. Yeah, we'll wait till we, yeah. I'm 100%, we'll try it again. We need some royalties. But uh, but anyway, so come to find out, I was able to get it back in drive, which my family's in like, they're like, are we going to get home? I'm like, look, the trans works. It yeah. just has to know what gear to be in, okay? We're golden. I get home. So what's, what do you got to do when you get home? You got to pull it back into place? So I, so I get home and I'm like, okay, I might have to have Nicole come over and put her foot on the brake while I go out and get underneath the hood and put it back into into park, right? I get home. The thing stuck on there the whole time. I was able to put it in park. I'm like, woohoo! I park in the cul-de-sac so I don't have to back out of a driveway this morning. I go, look, if I get one more pull on this thing without it coming off, I can have clean hands and go to work. I got out this morning. Boom. Yeah, I was on my side. I drove it to work, and I'm like, here we go, you know? But it was one of those things where it's like I was not anticipating that. Um, I look like a hero because I just knew what I was doing. I did. I, you know what? I should have hit that myself because yeah, my family, I know my family feels that way. Did you do the Tom Cruise and uh, uh, Jack Reacher where he gets out of the car and just lets it continue rolling? No, that would have been awesome, when though, you huh? got to work, just been like, hey. Hey. Uh, I called you about that. You know what's happening. You guys you guys are going to want to get on that because it's moving towards the shop, okay? <laughs> I don't know whose toolbox that is, but you're going to want to get on that. Um, <clears throat> but no, so I, I just, I thought I'd bring, I thought I'd bring that up and just, you know, kind of say that I, I am kind of a hero, borderline. So but that's fun fact number one. Let's do fun fact number two. All right, fun fact number two. In Russia, there's a monument to honor laboratory mice that have lost their lives uh, for furthering scientific research. Okay. <clears throat> let me let me tell you something. That's the guy. Now, does that look like it's from a cartoon? Yeah, it looks like it's from the Secret of Nim. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm Which, saying. Which I mean, it ties in because it does. The rats of Nim were it's a, it's being a, tested on. It's a secret. It's a secret. But anyway, so this is in Russia. What's weird is Russia. They really pick their battles. Yeah, you know what I mean. They don't do a lot of stuff well, that everybody else does, but they're like, let's get a mouse it's like up there. They read Teenage Mutant, Mutant Ninja Turtles, but didn't have the translation. Yeah, they're like, boy, that Splinter. Yeah, seems that like Splinter he's, seems cool. Let's make he, a. He's something. Let's get a statue. Let's make them more stereotypically racially Asian and then make a statue of <laughs> them. They did. Yeah. They really did. They made them look, yes, yeah, like if you were in a, like a like Chinese the, movie, yeah. Uh, yeah, a kung fu movie, you'd be like, that mouse knows it's like it's in the real far eastern part of Russia. To be yeah, honest. yeah, no, no. It's almost like they're mocking yeah. someone. They're like, look, we're going to put a mouse up there. Uh, we know what it really is, you know? <laughs> so, but I just thought, way to pick your battles. It's like, remember back in the day, they used to have bread lions, used to have this, used to have that. Yeah. Hey, we got enough bronze to do a mouse statue. What are we thinking? What's what's the over under? Yeah. You know. Also, you know, we have killed probably billions of mice. Yeah. <laughs> As, what do you think? A three foot bronze you, mouse statue? Can you, can you, can you Sta- statue? What do you think? You know. Hey, is Jesus this good? Yeah. <laughs> is right. We even. Right. Yeah. We're so, gonna kill some more. Yeah. What do we What do we have to do to get to par? Okay. Yeah. Look, we're gonna go back in the hole. We just need to know right now. What yeah. can we do to pull it up to even? Yeah. So we're, but yeah, we're, we're gonna bogey mm-hmm. real quick, but we want to pull it even. Yeah. But a bronze mouse. Yeah. Okay. So I just, I, what would have made me. Maybe that's where the, the amber room disappeared too. Like when the, the Bolsheviks came in and tore up the, uh, the palace, the amber room <laughs> disappeared. Maybe it's just all in one nugget underneath that mouse. It's the mouse. Yeah. It's the mouse. No one's decided, no one's <clears throat> like thought to look there. Have you ever picked up the mouse's toe? Like, what do you hey, mean? Do you notice that the mouse showed up one month after all of our treasures disappeared in that giant, like base yeah. with the bronze part on top? <laughs> and underneath the mouse, it says not a tomb. Yeah. It's like, hold on a yeah. second. Hold on. Yeah. Are there riches in there? What do we need to do? So, <clears throat> no, I just, I really found that odd that, that, that like you said, billions. And they're yeah. like, I think statues going to make everything right. I think we're good. <laughs> yeah. We, we, they just yeah. start handing out Arby's coupons. Listen, here's an Arby's coupon. We're real sorry about that. Yeah. Families are reaching out. What about all the young boys that were, that were killed in World War II for no reason? Uh, we don't have bronze for that. Yeah, we don't have a bronze. We use it on the mouse. Yeah. First off. Mouse out front should have told you. <laughs> a, bill, a billion to one for a mouse statue. You got to get there on the kits. Yeah. All right. We're not, yeah. we're not, we're not quite there yet. You we, know, uh, used all that up. It's... <laughs> Our bronze allotment yeah. for Russia. We've, we're, we're pretty much over the bronze allotment, sir. We just cannot yeah. do it. We put glasses on the mouse, yeah. sir. Remember we put glasses on? Yeah. It's extra bronze. We made linen's head back in Moscow. You <laughs> yeah. can, that's a human. You can check that yeah, out. Yeah. We don't have, <laughs> we don't have kid bronze. Okay. Yeah. We got mouse bronze. That's what we have. So, but yeah, I thought that was a very interesting fact. And again, they really did make him look like a, a wise old Asian yeah, man. He, yes, they did. Yeah. All right, here's here's the second one. <clears throat> this one here is kind of weird. When trains were introduced in the U.S., many people believe that women's bodies were not designed to go 50 miles an hour. Yeah, I had read that. Okay. That their uteruses would fly out of their bodies if they accelerated to that speed. Okay. I mean, it's, it's wild. I mean... It, 
that's wild enough as it is, but it's wild yeah. to think that at one point people were like, ooh, 30 miles an hour? Yeah. Better oh, pump, yeah. Pump the brakes on yeah. that. <clears throat> Better hold on to your uterus. Yeah. You know, we're going to get it. Yeah. We're going to get to 30. Yeah. Also, <clears throat> tell me you've never seen a woman completely naked without actually telling me you've never seen a woman completely naked. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, when we put them on the train, yeah. they're going to, sir, we understand. Yeah. Okay. We understand. Yeah. So, because how do they think that's working? Is it, is it going to come out their butthole? Like, is it flying out the back of it? Well, that's the thing. So here, if you told me a pregnant woman shouldn't be on a train because you've, okay, I get it. But you know, there's stuff on a dude too, but yeah. it's reproductive. Yeah. So does that mean if we start going too fast, it's going to end up in me well, and that, I no longer have that's one? That's my thing. It's like, which way, which, do they not know how direction works? If you go fast forward, yeah. the things that are coming out of you are going to go backwards. Yeah. They're not going to go forward with the speed. Right. So I got to worry about my like intestine coming out my butt. Like, yeah. Yeah, no, it's just the women. They can't squeeze that tight. So, hey, so if I get on a train, I want to sit with my back facing them going yeah. forward. Yeah. Because that way, that thing's just getting just enormous. You know, what, you know what I think this was? Yeah. This was the scientists we have today that test ants' legs and oh, yeah, all yeah. other stuff. They mm. just wanted it. They made this theory up and were like, uh, ladies, we're going to need to get on this train. Uh, the, at, at best, you can wear a very short dress. Yeah. We got we to gotta be able to see your uterus. We got to see what happens. Got to be able to see your uterus. We got to get in there and check out what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> You hear that? If the dudes are like, no way I'm taking my woman on a train. I want to yeah. go have fun. Listen, tell her her uterus yeah. is going to fall out. Okay? Hey, you know that, she uh, can't go. You know that thing up <clears throat> there? It's going to fly out. Yeah. Hey, do uh, you, guys, you guys all got uteruses? Yeah, can't get on this, can't get on this train. So <laughs> this, is, this is the- Yeah, you uh, know how like, we're kind of shaped like we're already pointing that way? That's we're good. Yeah, we're an arrow. We're, we're an arrow. We're, we're, we're going gonna cut, We're going to cut right through the speed. We're going that way. We're fine. <laughs> We're fine. <laughs> Great. Now our uterus is in our butthole. <laughs> this is wonderful. Yeah. This is wonderful. So, but anyway, yeah. So at 50 miles an hour, and again, like you said, 50 miles an hour was fast back then. Yeah. And right now, if I do 50, I hate life. Right. Okay. Can you imagine now they're like, 49, <clears throat> hold on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the light comes on. Please strap yeah. your uterus yeah. to the, uh, please put on your, your, your lap belt. Doom. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the captain has turned on the please fasten your uterus belt. Yes. <laughs> So, I have you are to, now free to move about the train. <laughs> I have to, you want to know what's weird? This guy's probably related to one of those scientists. This guy's a lawyer. Uh, Clement uh, Valingdom. I don't know how to say his last name. A lawyer who, while trying to demonstrate how the victim might have accidentally shot himself, shot himself, and he died. Here's the deal. He won the case. Because he's like, yeah. my guy died like this. Yeah. What you, a guy. Yeah, you don't think it's possible? <clears throat> Watch this. <laughs> Hold my beard. Yeah. But this this guy, so this is an old guy. I mean, you can look at him. That's an old dude. Yeah. So that's that's from the 1800s, yeah. probably, right? So Yeah, that looks about the, about the <clears> same <throat> level of picture we have in Lincoln, so right. mid-1800s. So my thing is, though, is if if that's your whole case, your whole premise, you tell you tell the guy, you're like, look, you're going to fry, okay? You're going to fry. I bet his son was the inventor of, like, you know, test dummies. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I can't go through this again, okay? I, I need I need my mom. <laughs> you know those things we put dresses on so we could show what they look like, what they would look like in a person? I'd bet that worked for bullets, too. Yeah. Do you remember those those uh, dummies we had with fake uteruses we used to yeah. put on trains? Yeah, I remember the train uterus. Any, any chance- uh, we, Where are those scientists? Any chance we could put like a neck beard and on one like, of those? Oh, little Timmy, those weren't those weren't fake. Yeah, those- We used real women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Marsha yeah. and Brenda? Yeah. And, wait a minute. You mean- Yeah. You mean your real. mom and- <clears throat> The mother of your stepbrother, right, and your other stepbrother. So weird, so weird. But uh, but again, and we never talked about where their dads were, because <laughs> Maury wasn't alive in the eighteen hundreds. That's why you couldn't figure that out. Maury Maury wasn't there. Mm. But but for you to for you to like bang like you're banging on the desk. I I tell you this is possible, Lala, and then you shoot yourself. Yeah, that means you had a loaded gun in the courtroom. True. <clears throat> okay, that's the first thing. Yeah. Okay. That, who did that? So, secondly, though, I would be like, if I was a judge, I'd be like, well, I got to tell you this. You have both had the, the dumbest and the smartest lawyer yeah. in the same shot. <laughs> you, you, know, you know the guy from the, de the, the this is the defense guy, right? Yeah. So the guy that's that's the prosecuting attorney is over there going, prove it. Yeah. <laughs> prove. Sure you can. He just, that's all he does. He's just sarcastic. He's like, you know, you could really shoot yourself. Sure. Sure you could. So you that. have lucked yourself into what might be the most clever and the most stupid yeah. <laughs> defense attorney I've ever seen. Case dismissed. As he hits Get that the, body out of there. As he hits the ground, yeah. his guy his guy that he's representing goes, yes, yeah. two times. He's getting yeah. off and he wants to pay. Okay. The guy that he's supposed to pay yeah. just died. Yeah. Okay. So, but again, 
I, I would never think that that's how the that's like testing yeah. firearms on yourself. Right. Okay. Hey, do you think this is going to leave a mark? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. Tell you what it did. It made you a winner. Well, okay. I, mean, I can't tell you how many, like, their shows, uh, Jackass originally was going to do that. The original, like, not even on the show that, that, that because there's a video where Johnny Knoxville is testing out mace and pepper spray and yeah. tased. The last one was supposed to be a 38 pistol with really with, uh, the cheapest body armor they could find. <clears throat> Luckily, they talked him out of that. But I've seen other people like recreate that, and they're like, "Oh, that really hurt. That was really stupid." Yeah, like, yeah. How do you think that's not stupid? Yeah. What if he shot you in the head? Yeah. Oh well. Uh, yeah. Sorry. He said he that. wasn't going to miss. Yeah. Well, you know, stuff yeah. happens. Ask this lawyer. Yeah. Roger Clemente. It's like the first Super Troopers is. when they're yeah. when they're yeah. testing. <clears throat> and he got the thong on. Yeah. yeah. You know, he, they film that outside of a prison. Did they really? Yeah. And the it, apparently, uh, Steve, what's his name, is bare butt, really. Uh, Oh, yeah? Really drove the men wild, yeah. That's funny. Well, you don't see a lot of butts that, that are new. Yeah. Fresh meat. Yeah. Hey, that's one I don't, I haven't seen yet. <laughs> so here, here's my last fun fact. This one is my favorite one, because I want to show you the picture in a second. In the 1800s, so we're still way back, Siberian hunters donned spike suits as a protective measure when hunting bears. These suits, covered in sharp spikes, were designated... Uh, were, des- were designed, sorry, to fend off bear attacks, providing a layer of safety to the hunter in close encounters. That is the creepiest looking thing I've ever seen. Okay. I also think it'd be funny if the bear was running and all of a sudden scooped that guy up like a burr. Yeah. <laughs> and now that guy's just yeah. flailing around on the bear's back like, ah, yeah. ah, who, ah. Who's, who, who's the guy that looks like that in a movie with the face all spiky? You know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, Hellraiser? Right? Hellraiser. Yeah. So it looks like Hellraiser only his whole body. Okay, yeah. that's what it looks like. Here's the deal. How do you put it on? How do you tighten the belt? Yeah. You can't reach out to do it. So this is great in theory for me to put a picture up. How are you getting dressed? Okay. And then the other thing is, what is the, who's the dumbest SOB on the face of the earth that had to realize, I need to do a head spiky too. All these bears doing is eating heads off well, of every also, one of these guys. I mean, the bear's going to see that and not realize what it is. What's going to stop the bear from taking the first initial swing? And knocking you six ways a Sunday, you know, just right. slap. Now he's going to get his hand hurt or, like we mentioned, get his hand stuck to you. <laughs> now this bear's upset and you're stuck to his yeah. hand. <laughs> right. And he's trying to swing you around yeah. off. And now meanwhile, he, your legs and neck are snapping. Yeah. Now he's pissed. Okay. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, if you think about it, imagine the first, so the first guy that made these, like he worked for like the NBA and they were breakaway. So like the bear smacks you really hard and you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, just pop right out. <laughs> You're standing there in just a pair of underwear yeah. or a little, I bet you long johns, right? So you're standing there in long johns and the bear's like, and now we eat. Also, I don't know if people have noticed this, but the animal kingdom is not as dumb as we think. I think one bear sees this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Next bear picks up a, picks up a <clears throat> stick. Yeah. <laughs> just beats you right out of it. <laughs> you are now a pinata. Yeah. <clears throat> you are a spiked pinata. That's all you are. Knocks you out, brings you down <clears throat> to the river, uses you to catch salmon. <clears throat> No, he does. Just throws you in the river and you're like, you pick up 19 salmon. And he's that was, like, that's, we're good to go. That was my whole thing. He walks back to your camp and uses you to kill everyone else yeah. in your camp. Okay. Oh, that'd be great if he, if, he, if he like just balled you up and bowled you into <laughs> your camp. <laughs> it's a seven, 10 split. I got the 10. All right. I got the 10. You go get the seven. They can't outrun us. We're okay. Oh my God. Yeah. But that's exactly, I, I, I want to do a TCO sells it for you. And because and, I just scrolled down and I got all excited because right, I was going to skip it. Let's do it. But I want you to do it as a cold read. I know you're, I know you're, but you have to do this because you, <laughs> I don't do think it. you, I don't think you can do it without laughing. <laughs> I'll, I'll try. Do Co- it. TCO sells it for you. Coughing 300 pounds. That's British pounds. 3.2 feet coughing for sale due to wrong diagnosis. Any inquiries, please give me a call at Redacted. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not uh, someone trying to sell you phlegm. It is a coffin. (laughs) It is a coffin, but it's spelled coughing. It is spelled coughing. Which is what we've done a couple times today in the microphone. But it also tells you that it's it's available because there was a wrong day. Listen, he didn't die. He's going to someday. Yeah. You own this. Yeah. Why don't you just hang on to it? <laughs> you want to you want to know the, the quintessential I'm going to need that someday? Uh good news, bad news. Yeah, this is not hoarders. Good news, you're going to live forever. Bad news, you got 300 pounds <laughs> yeah. locked up in a yeah. coffin. Yeah, sorry about that. It's coughing, man. It's, but six, six point two feet yeah. coffin. Good news, you're the uh Highlander from uh you're the immortal from Highlander. Yeah. But uh that box you bought? Yeah. Well, and the creepiest thing in the picture, it stood up in the corner. Yeah. It's like, 
and and it is like it's a it's a coffin shape. Like it's not even like yeah, it's not a casket. In, in, it's a coffin. In Europe, they they do the <clears throat> they do the weird like bulge out of the shoulders thing. Yeah, like, that's yeah, common the, for them. The white out of the shoulders, and that's a coffin. A casket would be the yeah the hot casket. dog tube that yes, we have yeah. straight box. But uh, but no, I I just when I saw that, I thought coffin. And you know, you someone know, I mean, was know, proud of that. You know, the irony is that the diagnosis was, you know, lung disease. <laughs> well, I better get a box. Turns out he doesn't have lung disease. We got to sell the coughing. Yeah. <laughs> no one's got coughing. Do you, have, do you have lung cancer? No, he's coughing. Yeah. There's a difference. Oh, I thought you meant I had to go buy a coffin. Yeah. But no, it's, just, it's so great. To you just, know, it'd be great, though, if they bought other stuff thinking that they were going to inherit and now they're selling the coffin so they don't have to sell the other stuff. Yeah, they're keeping it. Like, hey, really can I nice come stuff. see the coffin? Uh, yeah, just park behind the Maserati. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Well, look, we can't afford rent this week. We're going to need to sell that coffin. Okay. The Maserati can stay for another month. Yeah. <clears throat> they're not even looking for you. They haven't even called. No. Okay. They haven't even called yet. So, but yeah, I, want, I wanted you to read that because how, I mean, how deep do you like, <clears throat> does someone go, um, real quick, how much preparation have you done for the death of your loved one? Because, oopsie. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna need a coughing. <laughs> My bad. My bad. Remember how we told you to go get <clears throat> this expensive funeral in a coughing? Yeah, you don't need to do that. Yeah. So here, let's do let's do a strange story. I just I, I really want to use strange down. stories. I got all excited. I saw that I'm like Ted's reading this. <clears throat> all right, Canadian man. Ma strange stories twice. Ma Macaulay. Yeah, Canadian man arrested after opening drugstore next to cop van on purpose. So it says Jerry Martin's stepbrother. Gord Rennie died of a drug overdose in 2022. Uh, he said that Rennie's death opened his eyes to the issue of contaminated drugs circling on Vancouver's black market. Okay. Uh, feeling that local regulations were utterly incapable of addressing Vancouver's and Canada's drug problems, Martin decided to take matters into his own hands. If no one else was going to make sure the city's drug users uh, could have untampered drugs, Martin was going to do it himself. Listen, you guys need to buy the good shit for me. Okay. My stepbrother, Died because someone sold bad shit. I got the good stuff. By the way, I'm going to set up right next to that cop van right there. Don't pay attention to that. Don't look at me. Focus. Eyes on me. Okay. How do you even do that? Right. Okay. I'm with you that it upset you and you're like, okay, yeah. look, I'm going to prove a point. You're not going to prove a point for eight seconds. Okay. Yeah. Try to make a sale. You're going to jail. <clears throat> now, does he goes. have to like build an entire like... Uh... You know how they do those things like in the old movies or stuff, and they push a button and like every, the panels would slide around and stuff like that. So we can pull up real quick, push one button, and like it all folds out and everything comes out. Or does he literally open the door, slap on a magnet that says "drug"? <laughs> does he even have the GS? Right, yeah. Just "drug," yeah. and they're yeah. like, Whoop. "Ooh, I got it." Yeah, I got it. You didn't even put up the rest of your magnet, <laughs> uh, sir. So this isn't zoned for map for vans with magnets on it. This is wild. You could have the word "rotting" on your van, but you cannot have. You cannot have. But it says, and thus the drugstore was born in May of 2023. Martin's business operated out of a mobile trailer. Already shaky. Yeah. All right. So here's the deal. Yeah, look, Heisenberg, I don't know if you pull up in an RV <laughs> and be like. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to see the Grand Canyon, and we're here to sell some weed. Okay? <laughs> so uh, one of the trailer's windows was fortified with plexiglass. I don't know that fortified and plexiglass go in the same sentence. Correct. Because here, if I was testing that 38 method like we were talking yeah. about earlier, I'm not going to stand behind the flex and go, go ahead, give it a shot. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and give it a shot. And if I'm building a fortress, I don't think I'm going down to the old Home Depot yeah. and being like, hey, can any plexiglass? You never take me alive, coppers. Mm. You're right. It's going right through that plexiglass. You're right. You're right. You want to know when they didn't need the Trojan horse? If the wall was made out of plexiglass. Yeah. Okay. They could have went right through it. Because <laughs> it was not fortified. Fortified. Yeah, it was plexiglass. So anyway, it says uh, <laughs> to keep potential intruders from entering through it. Uh, I don't know that plexiglass halts anybody. Okay. Oh, is the article that's what agreeing it says. with us? That's what okay. it says. It says, uh, yet Martin wasn't ready to trust a simple piece of plastic to protect his life. He knew drug users and dealers would be what, what they'd be like. So he also wore a stab proof vest. And that's cool, but your neck and your head yeah. is not in a stab proof. You know what else? Your genitalia is not in a stab proof vest. Your legs. Vest. You take a good one in the <clears> thigh. <throat> oh, yeah, you're done. That artery's out. Yeah. Yeah. So it says. I didn't expect him to stab me in other places. In front of the establishment, Martin had bright yellow sandwich boards detailing the inventory and prices. He definitely had quite a spread available. On the cheaper end scale, you could buy a single dose of methamphetamine or MDMA for $10 and heroin for $25. You said sandwich boards. <clears throat> yes. So you, other cops are like, oh, wait, hold on. 
Let's see where this goes. Let him put them all out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let him do all the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First off, he's not going to learn nothing if we stop him before he gets all his shit put out. Okay? <laughs> Let him work. Meanwhile, oh, dude, I, you know what? This is great. Meanwhile, 2.5 grams of crack cocaine would set you back a whopping $300. <laughs> well, that's what you do. You put, you put the, uh, you put the molly and the meth down at 10 bucks. You put the cocaine up at 300 That makes people want to just buy the heroin right in the yeah, sweet spot. Yeah, you're like, whoa, 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 hold on. Well, you know what? What can I get for 50 Heroin. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with heroin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's blue raspberry. <laughs> you know, it's like, what, what is this, slushy? What are yeah. you doing, you know? So it says, you can't, you can't blame Mar Martin for price gouging, though. He intentionally said he kept his prices close to street prices to ensure... That Vancouver's drug dealers could access tested, uncontaminated substances. Okay, I'm doing you a favor by charging three hundo for the I, old. I make no money after <clears throat> I pay my scientists. <laughs> What's that, baby Billy? <laughs> what are we doing? After I, <laughs> after I pay my scientists and my marketing, and everything, I don't make nothing. I just do it to help the people. I try to help as many people as the Lord will let me. Look, you're you know from, <laughs> one one thing. A cocaine three hundred bucks. Additional things of cocaine. 200 bucks a pop. Yeah. <laughs> I make nothing. Additional jug of cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> 200 bucks a pop. <laughs> Literally, it is just cost plus 10%. That's, That's it. all it is. That's it. That's all the Lord That's will it. let me charge. So it says a 24-hour operation. Martin's drugstore didn't manage to stay open very long. Do you think the police shut the shop down and arrested Martin within less than 24 hours? He was next to a, a, a cop van. What took so long? Well, it's probably one of those vans they just put out to deter people from speeding. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they went to go check it. Hey, we should probably move the van a couple blocks. Wait, what's this? You know what's weird? He's got his magnets hanging off their yeah. van. You yeah. know? Hold on. If you look over there in the van, I can get you a second yeah. crack cocaine for uh, 200 I don't know what they have up there, but we'll just pretend. Hey, 901, it's your emergency. Oh, no emergency. I just want to know if uh, the deals on the west side of town are good for drugs on the east side of town. Right. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Well, there's a van out here. Yeah. One of your guys is One of there. yours. It's got end plates on it. It's got to yeah. be yours. <laughs> It says I can get a second jug of cocaine for 200 bucks a pop. Whole jug. Whole jug. <laughs> By the way, that's the Righteous Gemstones. And if you've never watched that, yeah. do yourself a favor. Yeah. Go watch that. Look up Baby Billy. Baby Billy. Uh, yeah. Elixir. Elixir. All right. This coconut <clears throat> silkiness every morning. But it says that might be partially because Martin opened his store right next to a cop car in Vancouver's downtown east side. Not even a van, like an unmarked van. How, a cop car. How bad is it, though? You say it took uh, up to 24 hours for him to shut him down, and he parked right next to the cops. So here's the other thing. Here's the next sentence. If he'd have gone for more inconspicuous location, he might have made it 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd do the 48 hours theme. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got a hot one, everybody. So it says, according to the Vancouver cops at the time, they arrested Martin in connection with an illicit drug dispensary. In quotes, yeah. the dude's got sandwich ports. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. He's writing receipts. Okay. <laughs> Come on, man. Allegedly. You know? uh, that began, uh, the, the, the dispensary that began operating in downtown Eastside the previous day. The police seized two vehicles. One of them was probably their own. Oh, yeah. Okay. They're like, wait a minute. We're missing the squad car. We seized that, sir. That had paraphernalia. Did, did you guys tow it? Yeah, we have keys. Yeah, we right. could have just pulled it right. in. It's in the impound yard. Somebody owes fees. Somebody owes fees on that. So it says uh, uh, Martin's body armor and a bunch of Canadian currency. That's what they, so two vehicles, his body armor, and a bunch of currency. We also assume they took his drugs. I would assume that because it took 24 hours for them to go do anything. Yeah. They might have said, listen, you take all that stuff home, okay? That should not be out here. Yeah, yeah they're right. They are Canadian. You know what? Um just go ahead and take the home. Get rid of it, okay? Yeah, come on, eh? All right, eh? Just uh, take off. Yeah, take off, hoser. <laughs> so it says, although no charges were immediately pressed against Martin, which is amazing, he was still under arrest. Uh, as part of his bail condition, he was banned from entering downtown Eastside. Okay, so you get a ban from part of town. Yeah. Okay? He can't come around here. Why? Because he has great drug prices? Yeah, that, that's probably what it was. Okay? If yeah. This is like... Uh... Police Academy 6, City Under Siege. Yeah. The mayor is like, he can't come in my part. Yeah. That's where I sell my drugs. The cops were entirely unsympathetic toward the man, though. Do you think? Uh, we support measures aimed, this is quotes, we support measures aimed at improving public safety for people who use drugs, including harm reduction services and de decriminalization. Um, no. However, we remain committed in our position that drug trafficking will continue to be a subject of law enforcement. Yeah. Okay. Here's the deal. Yeah. That was all nothing. It took you 24 hours to say, 
Stop doing that. Hey, we got a tip. Well, where's it coming from? My rear view mirror. Yeah. I can <clears throat> just see it right out of the car. Yeah. Do you want me to take care of this? <laughs> <clears throat> you told me to do traffic. This is. Yeah. The one cop. This you know, is vice. I don't know. He was doing Uber Eats and he had yeah. to deliver it. That's when he's like, wait well, a minute. It took a while for, you know, Crockett and Tubbs to drive their <laughs> cigarette boat all the way around. Yeah. Cigarettes. I got those too, by the we case. Gotta, we got to go all the way down around South America. Yeah. They wouldn't let us through Panama. So it says, leaving a legacy. His ambitious goals, uh, he was ultimate aim was to, to change the Canadian Constitution. And getting arrested was always part of his plan. Uh, good, because yeah. uh, that was going to happen. Yeah. It was inevitable. So if I create a plan where the inevitable is going to happen, I feel pretty confident when it happens. I'm like, called it. As well, cut out the middleman. Just walk in and be like, hey, I'm going to do this $300 Coke right in front of you. Yeah. So it says that uh, that, that other people had created a toxic drug supply. I got news for you. Isn't any? Isn't his toxic, too? I was going to say, where do you get his? Right. It was leading to more and more Canadian deaths. He argued that by loosening regulations <clears throat> without first providing a safe supply, we don't need to buy, provide a safe supply of illegal drugs. I I think you're missing the point here. Yeah. Okay. Look, my, my stepbrother wouldn't have died if he could buy some good crank. Yeah. Okay. That's if what he If he needs. had gotten a totally clean eight ball, yeah. he'd be fine. Right. He'd still be here today. Yeah. He'd be doing, still be doing here doing clean eight yeah. balls. I got a, I got, I got a question. Was your, was your uh, stepbrother, was he a doctor or was he a lawyer? What did he do for a living? Yeah. I'm guessing he was uh, one of those. Yeah, he was a lawyer. Yeah, he was a, he shot himself. He shot himself. <laughs> that wasn't even about the drugs? <laughs> Wait a minute. So it said, oh, okay, listen. He'd been clean. Martin had earned a cannabis trafficking conviction, but he had been clean for 15 years. Okay. After his arrest, however, he fell in hard times and appears to have turned to old bad habits. Martin died of a fentanyl overdose in June of 23. Dude, this is May of 23. He opened this. A month later. later. Yeah. Like, okay. I, he turned to hard times. What? He went back to his drug trailer? Yeah. <laughs> Turns out my stuff had fentanyl in it too. I, who knew? Who knew? Maybe if you would have kept him out of more than just yeah. the east side of downtown. Yeah. We, okay. You can go to the east side of downtown. You can go back to your drug trailer. trailer. Yeah. We just left that. Good news. We put that on the west side. So yeah. you can totally get, you have access to your drug trailer. We locked <laughs> up all the drugs behind heavy duty plexiglass. They all should still be there. <laughs> so the bad guys can't get it. Yeah. We locked up the drugs, sir. By the way, we want you to wear yeah. this bear suit just yeah. in case somebody wants to start something. <laughs> now we got cocaine bear. Yeah. So, you know, now, that's when that suit comes in handy. Cocaine bear? That might come in that handy. That come in handy. Yeah. Now, that and plexiglass. In about 50 years, there's going to be a three-foot bronze statue of Martin. Martin's trailer. <laughs> yeah. Put up by the Russians. It's a Winnebago, yeah. but it's got glasses. Yeah. It's, that, that Winnebago looks yeah. oddly Asian. That's a weird mustache and hat for <laughs> that, that is, Winnebago. Is I don't Asian. like that. I'm not, I'm not on board with this. <laughs> Where can they find us, Ted? Think about it. So that checks out. Uh, not all the socials that checks out. WDT. <laughs> That Check Sound has been recorded for you at Audio High Podcast Studio. Brian is our sound producer, everything else producer. He does the board. He does everything here. He's Brian. You met him. Yeah. He's something. Just not paying attention. There he is. He's something. <laughs> He's not. This, listen, come on down. You want to not be paid attention to This episode has been produced by TCO Productions, Damon Procchio, Ted Wilson, executive producers. We'll catch you next time.